Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. I caught Karen, my dad's girlfriend, snooping through his bank account on his computer, so I exposed her as a gold digger. After that, husband wrongly accused me of stealing from him, so I returned the shoes I bought for him. And after that, am I the jerk for refusing to work from home so now people can no longer bring their dogs to the office? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen does not get to snoop through anyone's computer. I already did, Reddit boy. I now know how obsessed you are with watching cat videos. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. I caught Karen, my dad's girlfriend, snooping through his bank account on his computer, so I exposed her as a gold digger. I'm 16, female. My dad, who's 36, male, has been dating Delia, who's 42, female, for a year. He introduced us three months ago, and to keep it short, I don't like her. When my dad's not around, she's super passive aggressive, and I feel like she's constantly trying to compete with me and be like his favorite or the better one. I honestly don't know how to explain it. I can't really discuss it with someone because it's not like I have any proof or anything. Yesterday, she came here at 8 a.m. because the three of us were supposed to spend the day together, but my dad got called in for an emergency and said he'll be back by 2 p.m. No problem. I sat at the kitchen where you have full view of the living room, not because I was watching her, but because I've always sat there to do homework. If I looked at her, all I could see was her back, so I thought she was on her phone. I had to go to my room to get some papers, and when I walked behind her to go to the stairs, I saw what she was doing. She was using my dad's laptop. He's an architect, so his laptop is really, really important, and he doesn't let anyone use it. I thought to myself, what? But couples are weird, and guessed that she was the exception. She's also in the field. She saw me, smiled, and I went upstairs, got my thing and came back down. I guess she thought I was going to my room for a while because when I walked behind her again, she didn't notice me. She was seeing my dad's bank account, his Facebook, and his Instagram. She really had three things open at once. And I said, hey, you shouldn't be seeing that. And I took his laptop. She got red in the face and tried to make excuses like, I was trying to close them. It's not what you think until she got mad and said that she was his partner and I had no right to snatch things from her hands and that I was being a jealous brat because daddy wasn't all mine anymore. She demanded an apology and I told her to get out until my dad came back because I wasn't comfortable having her around anymore. She did leave but called my dad crying and made a fake version of what happened. He came back mad but after I explained what had happened and he saw the living room footage, he knew I was telling the truth apologized and thanked me. My grandmother, on the other hand, is upset because she really loves Delia and said that I did act like a jealous daughter and that when you have a man, you have to make sure he's good and agreed that I should apologize because I acted like a huge jerk. You're not the jerk and it's amazing your dad has your back. Let your other family members be mad. You did the right thing for your father. Simple. Not the jerk. Delia was crossing a boundary of your dad's, his rule that no one should touch his laptop and on top of that, she was clearly invading his privacy by going into his online accounts. You defended his boundary because you knew she was crossing it and her behavior wasn't okay. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or Delia? Please let us know. Dad sides with his daughter over his girlfriend? Now that's a pleasant surprise. Husband wrongly accused me of stealing from him, so I returned the shoes that I bought for him. I'm 29, and my husband, who's 36, is the breadwinner of the family. I stay home with the kids who are preschool age. He pays for the mortgage, bills, household needs, food, kids needs, etc. He has set a monthly budget for each category and handles getting everything done. Recently, he's become overwhelmed and told me to handle grocery shopping, but before he let me, he asked me to write a list of all the stuff we need so he could calculate the total and also so he'd have an idea how much I'll be spending when I take his credit card. I didn't have an issue with that because this way we'd watch our spending habits. However, he said I'm never allowed to get something that isn't on the list unless I'm paying for it some other way. On Friday, I was doing some grocery shopping as usual and saw that the store had some nice shoes on sale. The price was insanely low for this brand and so I decided to grab a pair for my husband thinking that he'd be happy with them since he needed new sneakers anyway. I bought them and when I showed them to him, he flipped out on me saying I made a huge mistake by buying something that wasn't on the list. I agreed with him but I thought that since the shoes were for him, then it would be different. He said I messed up and shouldn't have bought those sneakers without even telling him. But in my defense, I said that the price was low, so it's not like I spent $100 on shoes. And also, I saw this as a great deal and wanted him to have those nice sneakers. 
He plainly said that what I did is considered stealing since he never consented to have those sneakers purchased and said that I'm being irresponsible with money. That is why I no longer have an income and my spending habits need a grip. I felt hurt by what he said. We argued about it for hours and he avoided speaking to me for the rest of the day. The next day, I went and returned the sneakers and took the money back. He got home in the evening and lost it when he found out I returned them. He said he couldn't believe how petty and childish I was to actually do this. I explained I was just correcting my mistake. He tried to contact the store and was told the sneakers were already sold. He even got angry with me, but I told him that he accused me of stealing from him when I was just trying to do a nice gesture for him. He yelled that I had a lot of nerve calling what I did a nice gesture while using his money to do it. I told him he had no right to yell at me after I corrected my mistake and gave back the money he accused me of stealing. He threw a fit, then went out with his friends and came home late at night still not talking to me. Did I mess up? Maybe I shouldn't have purchased them knowing they weren't on the list, but I just wanted him to have those sneakers and thought I was doing a nice gesture. Not the jerk. His money? Charge him for cooking, cleaning, laundry, general housekeeping, and childcare then. If you're a stay-at-home mom, he earns family income. This is not right. As for the argument that you stole his money to buy him a gift, it's beyond messed up. If you decide to stay with him, surely you should stop buying him birthday and Christmas presents. By his own logic, you are stealing from him. My mom took some time off work when my sister and I were very little and my dad worked. I was talking to him about it the other day and he said, I may have been earning the money, but there's no way I could have dedicated that much time to my job if your mom hadn't been doing so much at home. She earned it just as much as I did. We're a team. You're supposed to be working together, OP. Ask yourself how often your husband acts like you're on opposite sides. Not the jerk. Not the jerk, but I'm seriously concerned for you. Almost all couples in your same situation with only one breadwinner share finances, so you should have your own credit card and be able to make reasonable purchases without discussion. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. Yowza good nowza. I'm concerned for her too, to be honest. Am I the jerk for refusing to work from home so now people can no longer bring their dogs to the office? Hi, I'm 32, female. Here it goes. When everyone was working in the office, dogs were never even an option. Lockdown, shutdown, working from home. People trickled back in and they're allowed to bring their dogs to ease the transition. My group stays back for another year. Everyone's finally called back to the office. I'm allergic to dogs and the smell gives me migraines. Huge bummer because I do like dogs, but it explains why in one foster home I was always feeling sick. Boss says we'll figure something out. People with their own offices are not willing to give them up. Boss tells me that maybe it's best if I work from home. I live in a tiny studio that barely fits my bed and I have to sit on it or on my floor to have a workspace. I have one window. It's suffocating and I was starting to go crazy living there during lockdown and working from home. So I say that if I can negotiate a raise that will be enough to help me move to a larger place, I will consider working from home. Boss takes that to their boss, comes back and says unfortunately it's not in the budget. I say I'm not going back to working from home. Boss insists it couldn't be as bad as I'm saying and that everyone has to make adjustments. Mind you, boss and most of my other coworkers live in houses that they own. Most have huge backyards, entire rooms to dedicate as an office, etc. So of course they don't think it's a big deal. I stand firm and remind them that someone can give me an office, but no one would. So unfortunately, everyone has to stop bringing the dogs to the office. Coworkers and other people in the building are saying I'm being selfish for not just taking the deal and going back to working from home because they had all love to be allowed to. When I've told people about the tiny apartment and how I can't afford more, they say things like, just move back in with your parents or stop buying Starbucks and start doing Uber and Uber Eats after work and move to the suburbs as if I'm choosing to be in this position just to spite them. Others have been like, why can't you just take a Claritin and tell me I'm making up the smell causing migraines? Each of them has a suggestion about how I should just go out of my way to make all these changes, some of which I can't even do just because people want to bring their dogs to the office. Am I really the jerk for this? Thanks for the responses so far. I appreciate the judgments and they're giving me a lot to think about. Just as a note, due to circumstances I prefer to not get into too much, I cannot just go find a new job or a new place to live. These are things that are, for me, out of my control for the time being. Things will hopefully change in a few years. Not the jerk, but I'd start looking for a better job. People are jerks in an office and they won't get over this. 
your environment there is only going to get worse. Not the jerk. If they want to be with their dog so much, one of them should make the sacrifice of giving up their office or they should be given the option to work from home. Not the jerk. Dogs weren't permitted before lockdown. They shouldn't be permitted now. Yeah, it sucks leaving the fur babies at home, but it is what it is. I may be out of line with my thinking, but this could technically be considered discrimination because of a known medical condition. Maybe the threat of an EEOC complaint would straighten out your boss. 1000% not the jerk. This is your health. I love dogs too, but I would not bring mine to a place that would cause someone else discomfort. I occasionally bring my dogs to work. However, I always let coworkers know that they are coming and I ask if it's okay. When we hire new staff, I ask them how they feel about dogs in the workplace. If it made one single person uncomfortable, I would not bring the dogs. Fortunately, we are all dog obsessed, so it's all good. It's not as easy as take a Claritin. I hate when people say that. I have a severe food allergy. Can't even be in the same room with it. Coworkers are totally cool with just not bringing that food to work. Some will go out to their cars to eat it, then wash their hands when they come back in. That's how kind, caring human beings behave. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or coworkers? Please let us know. Employees fighting over not being able to bring their dogs to work? If I owned any shares in this company, I'd sell them right now. Leveraging my job description to put an end user in his place. I used to manage a Cadillac dealership's network a couple of years ago. There was a car salesman who also liked to study computers in his spare time. Unfortunately, that also meant that he knew way too much to be absolutely dangerous. I would constantly get complaints about him bunking down on his specific floating desk on the floor and locking it out from anyone to use it but him. I reached out to management about it, but they didn't want to do anything about it. Even though he was bypassing many security features like local admin, used a boot ENV to give himself local admin, web filtering, unapproved apps, remoting, etc. All via USB with a bunch of portable apps. Management. Why are you coming to us about an IT problem? This isn't a management problem when it involves computers. Isn't that your job? I'm pretty sure that's in your job description. You get the idea. But I was sick and tired of getting calls and messages daily about this one guy. So I decided that if management wasn't going to have my back on this issue, then I guess I have free reign to handle it how I please, right? Since I was dealing with an above average user, I decided to go to the furthest extreme. I took a machine imaged it to the same image as the floating desk machines, and went to town, planning all the restrictions needed. BIOS locked with password. Boot to USB disabled. Chasis locked and closed. Auto login to a generic sales account. USB disabled in Windows. Desktop redirected to a folder on the file server with locked permissions. No delete, specific icons only. Chrome browser only. No Internet Explorer or anything else. Chrome bookmarks set to only what is needed. Log off removed, only restart or shut down. Even if he did manage to somehow log off, it would just log back in to sales. Add a litany of other basic Windows restrictions that essentially silos the machine to either Chrome or their car sales software. I brought all my changes and my purchase requisition for the locks over to management and was approved with no questions. I sold it as a necessary security measure and threw my weight around about how this is in my job description to address it and implement it. Spent an early Monday morning rolling out all the changes before he came in. Late afternoon rolls around and he finally shows up. I'm off the clock, but decided to stay to see the fallout. He walks in, makes a beeline to his desk, and watched as he sat confused at everything. I can't log out. I can't boot my USB. Windows can't see my USB either. I can't do anything at all. I watched in pure satisfaction as he just got up from the chair and walked around the sales floor aimlessly with nothing to do. The bonus part is, after all the changes, whenever a different salesperson complained about the changes, all I needed to say was, sorry for the inconvenience, the changes were necessary due to a salesperson messing with the computers. I'm not allowed to say who it was though, so unfortunately, the changes will need to stay. They all knew who it was though. Am I the jerk for letting my ex sign over his paternity rights before he knew the babies were his? Me, female, 42, and my boyfriend, male, 57, of four years split recently. We met while we were both going through divorces and we got together about six months after mine was final. His was final before mine. We lived in different towns, so we sometimes would go a couple of weeks between visits due to distance, but it worked for us. He has four kids, a son who's 37, daughter who's 35, son who's 14, another son who's 12, and has shared custody of the two youngest with his second ex-wife. I share two kids, my son who's 18 
my daughter who's 16, with my ex-husband. It just hasn't made any sense for us to move closer due to having to fight with exes to change custody agreements. I found out eight months ago that I was pregnant. This was completely unexpected as he had a vasectomy after his last son was born. Neither of us had any intention to have more kids and I was not prepared to be pregnant at 41. I didn't even find out until I was almost five months along. I went to see him and his reaction was, well, he broke things off with me and had some very choice words to call me. He refused to believe anything other than that I was seeing someone else and trying to pin this pregnancy on him. His ex-wife cheated on him often, which is why they split, so part of me understands his emotional reaction, but he spent the last eight months ghosting me and has refused to even speak to me. The babies, twins, a boy and a girl, were born three months ago. I do not need his financial help, but I decided to file for child support so he would do a paternity test. Once his friend said he took the test, but before we had the results, which I never needed, he was the only person I had been with, I had him served with papers to sign over his parental rights and all financial responsibility as well. Unsurprisingly, he signed the papers without hesitation. We got the paternity test results back and now he's blowing up my phone and showing up at my house angry at me and saying I'm the jerk because I refuse to entertain the idea of getting back together or moving closer to him. He also says I tricked him into signing over his rights. I am aware he may be able to fight me as it is recent. Some of my friends and family are telling me I am the jerk for doing this to him and others say they understand why I did. So, dear Reddit, am I the jerk? Edit. I live in Colorado. We did have to go to court to relinquish his rights, but it was a very short visit. He did not deny paternity. He admitted to never wanting anything to do with the babies, that he had not met them, and that the distance between us would make it difficult to co-parent. My lawyer brought up his felony that he had abandoned the babies, the fact that I have both financial means and family support. The judge agreed termination was acceptable. I will apologize because after speaking to a few people, I'm learning it is rarely this smooth when my lawyer made it sound and seem so easy. I do know he can fight and possibly get his rights back and I'm undecided on if I would fight him on that. I am absolutely willing to co-parent with the man. I am not willing to forget what happened and just start dating again. Not the jerk. Why would you get back together with someone who accused you of cheating? He has nobody to blame but himself. And if he signed over rights and the kids weren't his, the papers wouldn't have meant a darn thing. Sounds to me like his family is giving him crap and now he wants to save face. OP. I do believe he really felt there was zero chance of the babies being his. I was 100% fine with a paternity test when I found out I was pregnant because of course with a vasectomy he was going to have concerns and that I could have dealt with. But ghosting me was childish and left me alone when I was feeling very vulnerable. Now he wants to be a family. He is a good dad and I would be okay with him being in the twins' lives, but I don't want to pass off kids every other week for the next 18 years. Not the jerk. He didn't have a problem with accusing you of cheating. He didn't have a problem with leaving you alone the rest of your pregnancy. He didn't have a problem with giving up his parental rights. Now he should not have a problem with facing the consequences. He's saying that you tricked him into signing over his rights? Yeah, sure, right. Unless you presented a stack of mundane papers awaiting his signature and hid the paternity docs in the middle, he knowingly signed away his rights. There was no trickery. Your ex needs a wake-up call on reality and personal responsibility. Not the jerk. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her ex? Please let us know. Don't want to heed my warning about giving deep discounts to wealthy clients? I work for a company that does commissions for clients. I'm the manager of my department. This comes with a number of responsibilities. One of them is bidding on work. Last fall, I evaluated the current global situation and how it would be affecting the cost of our supplies and possible shortages as well as inflation. As a result, I priced a few of our pieces of work to help prepare us for the price increases I had predicted, giving us an 8-10% to profit upon completion. A well-known client came in and contracted us to do a rather large and time-intensive project. This individual is very well off and is in no way in any danger to be going broke anytime soon. However, this client complained about the new prices. He had contracted us in the past on certain items and wanted the same work done again, but seeing the new price, he complained to the boss and threatened to go somewhere else. The owner, my boss, decided I had priced the work too high based on the complaints of this one customer. Previous customers had not batted an eye. Boss asks me to adjust the price down to be the same as the competition. Just so you know, the competition does not carry the same quality standards and often has a two to three year turnaround. I explained this to the boss that my numbers were based on the increases from suppliers and subcontractors 
who I speak to regularly. These companies we work with warned me beforehand about what was coming and I took it all to heart. I had passed the warning on to the boss at the time, but it appeared he blew it off or forgot about it, and at the time of making the new price list, he didn't complain. It wasn't until this one, somewhat well-known local client, Rose Stink, that he decided to bring the issue up with me. So boss insisted that we should be pricing lower to keep up with the competition or we would lose this customer. Of course, I argued that it wouldn't hurt us in the long run and all we would be doing is attracting tire kickers. He stood his ground though and I didn't have the energy to fight him on it. So in the end, he's the boss and got what he wanted. So the time came to order the supplies and pay the subcontractors. The cost of these materials, as well as the work done on them, were 90% of the price boss had agreed to for the customer. This is before my own labor costs were factored in. Boss sees the bill and gets really upset and asks me what the customer was paying to have the work done. I gently reminded him that this was for rich tire kicker customer and I had warned him well beforehand, but because he wanted to retain rich tire kicker customer, he got what he wanted, but the company did the work at cost and perhaps more with my labor factored in. Boss later came to me and asked me to make up a new price list. I told him I didn't need to. I did that last fall and as long as no one gives deep discounts, we will be in the green. He's listening to me now. I'm the chief inspector of a helicopter maintenance facility. We have a few high net worth individuals, billionaires, not multimillionaires, multi-billionaires, whose helicopters we perform annual inspections on. One of them has over the top documentation requirements, well above and beyond the FAA minimum requirements, which already aren't anything to scoff at. Due to their management company's policies, for the last two years, I've been telling our sales and contracts folks to bid higher on that particular customer to help recover the cost of the man hours associated with all their additional documentation. Sales and contracts. Oh no, we can't do that. We could lose the customer that way. For the last two annual inspections, our profit margin on this customer was negative ones and almost made 1% ones because we refused to charge the billionaire's flight department a little extra over an irrational fear of losing them as a customer. Karen Mother demands the password to see my grades. Little bit of backstory. The story revolves around me, 17 female, and my mom, 36 female, who I will call Entitled Mom. Entitled Mom and my dad went their separate ways when I was very little, they weren't married, and I went to live with my grandparents on my dad's side. Entitled Mom would sometimes spend a few days with us and then go who knows where. Around two years ago, she left and didn't come back. I see her maybe once a month. In my country, we have a website that shows your grades, exams, and stuff like that. You have your email and a password. I never gave Entitled Mom my password because she never asked for it, and I didn't think that she'd even need to see my grades. No one except me has my password. So I was doing my homework, and I got a call from Entitled Mom. That's rare, so I picked it up. This is approximately the conversation. Entitled Mom. Hey, OP. How are you? Me. Good. How about you? A little bit tired, but fine. Me. Good to hear. Do you need anything? Entitled Mom. Well, I just wanted to know how you are and ask you to give me your password to your grades. Me. What? Why? I lost the password I had, so can you give it to me again? Me. What are you talking about? Why do you even have my password? Well, you typed it in on my phone once years ago and it stayed there. I changed my phone, so I need you to give it to me again. Me. No, you will not have my password. That's my personal information, and I don't feel comfortable by you looking at my grades and exams. Oh, come on. It's just grades. And besides, I am your mom. I have the right to see your grades. It's not that big of a deal. Me. It is. You can't look at my grades. It's my personal information, and I don't want you anywhere near it. And besides... You aren't really a good mum to begin with. Oh, are we going there now? Well, you shouldn't complain that much. After all, I live the life you wanted to have. A life I wanted? Are you nuts? I can't believe you would say that to a minor. Do you hear yourself? Are you crazy? Why are you yelling? If it's about your grades, me, this is not about my grades. This is about my private information that you have no right to. You are a bad parent. And I'm so ashamed to be related to you. I'm going to change the password and goodbye. I stopped the call then and I changed the password right away. This type of conversation is not unusual for her, but she really made me mad. That's all. 
I just wanted to share my story. License email mailboxes for all former employees? I don't recommend it, but okay. Edit for clarity. Bad IT director had a few nicknames, like IT director, dental commander, IT commando, computer commando, IT Joe, IT boy, hacker god, hacker dude, and IT Bob. These were all real nicknames we gave to the guy as we dealt with his antics. Sorry if confusing, but personally my favorite part of dealing with them. Everyone else as named. A few years ago at my previous job, I was a senior technician at a managed service provider of IT services. We were a small company and were often yes men to just about anybody who would offer us money in exchange to their requests. The owner of our company would not push back against those that made crazy demands overly cheap or even overly disrespectful clients. This led us to oftentimes doing tasks out of our normal scope at cost and a lot of times being cussed at for no good reason. Our primary services included on-site service and support and cloud hosting of in-house and third-party solutions, one of which was Microsoft 365, which obviously is very commonly used for email services. We would keep living knowledge base pages on each company, their services, environment info, and even policies of which different companies may demand, like only follow through with support requests from office managers, or if admin access is needed for this particular cluster of servers, contact Jim. One of our clients was a dental company that was of decent size. They had about 10 locations and were growing. Customers loved them, and we often took pleasure going on site, as it was heaven dealing with such polite people in contrast to what we had to deal with most of the time otherwise. They would even demand us to have some lunch if we happened to be on site during their Friday luncheon. It was great. They used 365 services and only used E3 licensing for their users, which was total overkill. $20 per user per month when most employees barely even checked email, let alone made an Excel doc. They wouldn't take our recommendation to go use the essentials at $5 per user instead, unless it was an office manager or headquarters worker. Also, they had a decently high turnover rate as it was a college type town and a lot of students would work there in one of the various positions to make decent pay and good experience while attending school. They would come and go. The IT director, literally only a title anyone can wear nowadays, was pretty bad at his job. Of this company called us one day yelling because there were a bunch of mailboxes that were not licensed. We tried to explain that these were mailboxes that were converted to shared of employees that had left. Doing so allows us to remove the license of the mailbox while keeping all of the mail intact and very easily accessible if we needed to delegate access to someone who needs to review. You basically get to archive the mailbox for free. He barely let us even speak and the tech who actually took the call was flustered, so I took it over completely. Using my best, well-seasoned customer service charm, I tried to explain to him the same, yet to no avail. They had 180-ish unused mailboxes that he wanted us to convert to a user box and add one of those premium, I'm drinking Stella in a fancy glass, licenses at $20 a pop per month. He resorted to personally insulting me, telling me I'm a tech guy who got promoted too fast and I should try a four-year school next time and demanded it be done right away with no specifics on how it be done. Bless your heart, man. Okay, we'll do it. Luckily, we record the calls. Also, I'll make note, this company has a policy that we are not allowed to use PowerShells, which for those that don't know, is a terminal that allows us to perform action by command line. We can write scripts for special tasks or even do things in bulk, saving lots of time. I knew this very well and I begged them repeatedly to let us use PowerShell in the past to no avail. So we ordered pizza in the office and got to work, converted every last mailbox to normal and licensed it. We even converted a spider into a god as he struck fear in us with his hairy legs and many ears. We weren't worthy. After we finished, we even had a contest to see who could frisbee off his 2003 discs the furthest since we had a binder full of them as well as a few other goofy games for about a half hour before we dipped out. It was a fun late night at work in the end. A month or so rolls by and our accountant had sent out all of the invoices to our customers on that fine second Monday of the month. Our dental commander called us at 12.03 p.m., three minutes after he would have gotten his, and he had blown a head gasket. He finally saw the bill for the additional 180 E3 licenses, plus taxes and fees. He was threatening to sue if me and my two coworkers or our boss didn't fix it. 
One thing about our pushover owner is that he didn't take kindly to someone insulting his workers directly as he took it personally since he interviewed everyone himself. He listened to the call recording after we begged him to do so. He did not like what he heard from IT Commando. He didn't give in and he even added a little razzle-dazzle that we had never seen before. He even noted that because it was a written policy that we can't use PowerShell, we should have billed the request as a project since they demanded it be done in such a short time and was not a normal support request. In order for us to remove the licenses, they would also have to have this done at the same project rate and they would have to pay for the bill as well as the two projects now or we wouldn't touch it, period. Our project rate was $125 an hour for junior techs and $175 an hour for senior techs. It was going to be about two hours per head, all at the senior rate for each leg of the ordeal, so about 12 hours all in all as there were three of us. Computer Commander didn't know that the owner of his company and ours were moderately close friends for nearly two decades, would occasionally play golf together and whatever company owners do when not at the office. The dental company owner and IT Joe came to our office immediately. Before allowing the discussion to proceed far past hello, our company owner played both calls on full blast over one of those Logitech 2.1 systems. It was loud. Dental company owner was absolutely shocked at what was heard as this guy was always looked at in high standards. Hacker God was pale white as he sat there and did not move a muscle. He immediately told IT boy to call an Uber back to the headquarters and to stand by in the conference room. He wouldn't be driving back with him. He apologized profusely to us techs, nearly in tears it seemed. He wrote a check for one of the projects and the bill. We agreed to undo the work for free as he was a really good client of ours and was always nice. He gave us each $100 Visa gift cards the next week and bought us lunch in our own office a few times, all out of his own pocket. Hacker Dude was fired as soon as the owner of the company got back to the office and he entrusted us to take care of his IT systems while he found his replacement, who was ultimately better in every way. They took every recommendation of ours, including reducing the license types for the majority of their workers, while confused as to why this was ever a debated topic. This is the one company I truly miss at my last job. A good client. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.